And hello and welcome to That's The Point, the place for everything construction technology. My name is Corey Meyer and today I'm joined by my buddy, John Lopez. Hey Corey, what's up, what's going on? So, so today we're standing up, sans table, because uh, we're gonna talk about, dive into a different topic today, which it comes up all the time in trainings, it comes up in support calls, trade show floors, like it's a constant topic. Um, and it's the idea of proper tripod setup. So today we're going to walk through the steps to quickly, efficiently, and correctly uh, set up your tripod on your project. So to be sure there's a right way and a wrong way to do this. And so we figured we'd bring in John to be able to kind of walk us through the right way to do this. So hopefully we can save some headaches and some frustrations out in the field because accuracy is everything. And if you start bad, you end bad. And that's kind of the idea behind tripod setup, right? It's the foundation yeah. for everything else. It's the foundation like a house. If you start off bad, you're going to have more problems down the line. So. It just also maintains like your tilt compensator, some of the internal components that actually maintain your level, your equipment level while you're out there in the field and there's just vibration, wind blowing, that type of stuff. So it's the same way. If you're starting off with a bad foundation, you're just gonna do some wear and tear with that equipment two years on. Yeah, the and line. just the proper the proper steps at the beginning can save it and kind of let that instrument work less hard to give you just Yeah, to get hard. Yep. So why don't you walk us through the steps to actually set up this tripod? All right. So Setting up your actual tripod, you're gonna have a clip at the very bottom, I already went and done that for you, unclipped it, and you wanna take the protection cap off for your actual steel plate. So, what you wanna do is you basically, when you we're talking about this, the tripod setup, we're just talking about doing a resection. We're not talking about doing a known point where you have to look through an optical plummet, or if your actual your equipment, your robotic total station has a scope, if it's an RI, the higher the better, just to avoid people, and, and you're able to actually see your prism. Right. So, when you start out, there's gonna be a couple of locks right here. It's in between your railing and the center, and you wanna have these all the way up, as well as you wanna basically unlock your other screws at the very bottom that you turn. I mostly use those for stability on windy days or there's vibration around. You can go ahead and tighten those up. Most of the time, I'm just relying on the top ones. Okay. Now, once you actually set this, you're gonna set it up to your chin height. To do that, what you wanna do is you wanna step on this little peg right here at the bottom, and then you wanna raise it up to your chin height or so, okay? That's why then, I have you around, because that's at my height. <laughs> We're a little bit short here. <laughs> so then I'll lock one leg in place, and then I'll push down the other legs. I'll just basically push my fingers in between the railing, and then lock the other two. And then just like you're doing a push-up, you kind of want to just lean forward and then push your arm back or pull them back towards you and then set up the leg just like that. Okay. So now, just move this here. What you want to do is you want to have the top of the plate as level as possible. Most people use a torpedo level or they can use their phone the old fashioned way. Just look at it with your eye. What you're trying to do is just make sure that when you set up the equipment, it doesn't slide off the top of the deck. So if you had it like this, obviously that is not what we're looking for. Right. So what you wanna do is you will look at it one way, then you will look at it the other way and make sure that it's level. Now, once that's actually level and you like it, if we were on dirt, we would wanna stomp on these legs. And if there was some sort of adjustment, just basically move it around with your actual level lock. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the robotic total station out of its case. Then, you wanna set this on your actual tripod. So when you set this on your tripod deck, you wanna make sure you keep one hand on it at all times until you actually screw it in place. That is a if very expensive it, tip, I appreciate that. Yeah, if you can't <laughs> find it, look underneath and find the hole with the assembly bell screw. And then just get this a little bit snug for right now. What you're trying to do is you're trying to get this deck and this tri rack to be centered because it is metal, it will expand and contract with the sun. So what you're trying to do is just basically get this as centered as possible so one side doesn't go out. In reality, you have a tilt compensator so you don't have to worry too much about it. It's just a good technique to always have this centered. So what you're trying to achieve is you're trying to get this little tri rack bubble right here. You're trying to get it in between two legs. So that makes the leveling a little bit easier. Once you center this up, I usually just use my thumbs and go ahead and get this somewhere in place, and then lock it down. Okay? Now. Now the instrument's secure. Now the instrument's secure. We're on concrete floor, so we're just gonna put this little strap right here to prevent the legs from basically spreading out. I'm not gonna tighten it up all the way yet because we still need to do some adjustments with the legs. 
And then I can basically find the tri rack bubble. And all I'm really trying to do is get that bubble that's in there to go inside of the black circle just halfway. So to do that... So you're not trying to dial it in all the way? I'm not halfway trying to dial it in. Okay. We're going to dial in the rest of the way with the fine tuning screws here and the internal leveling inside of the unit after that. So for right now, we're going to go ahead and just step on one of the legs because I'm on concrete. I don't want it to slip and move. So I'm going to basically raise the actual lock. And what I'm trying to do is just move the bubble level over in the center of this leg. So by holding it with my left hand, I'm just holding onto the railing. I'm just bringing it up or down. And I'm lining up that bubble in the center. So now that I have that, I'll lock this in place. And then I would go on the other side. So I'll come over there where you're at. And do the same step, step on the leg. And then bring this down until the bubble level is actually halfway in the circle. Once that's halfway in there, all I'm going to do is just put a battery. I've already done that. And I would find the power button and just press the equipment on. Then it'll show you the Trimble logo. And you have 10 seconds to hit the very farthest right button, which is the inner button. Okay. And it'll take you to the internal leveling. Now, the first electronic bubble vial that you see is a 1 in 250 is the same accuracy as this tri bubble. bubble. Okay. So what you want to do is you want to fine tune the screws. Now, I always start off with the equipment halfway right here. Yeah, because there's that little notch There's a little there. indent. That just gives you enough room to make sure that you have that halfway point so that when you're leveling it, they're not too far out or you don't actually uh, have enough room to actually level it. So what I want to do now is I want to have the face display either over two knobs or one knob. If I have it over two knobs, what this does, it uses these two knobs right here as it's left and right, and the back knob as it's back and forth. So it all depends on where the face display sits. So if I turn the face display over this one knob, this now becomes my back and forth, and these two knobs become my left and right. Brilliant. So when you're adjusting left and right, the only thing you need to keep in mind is just like a clock. One knob's going to go counterclockwise, one's going to go clockwise. So basically you're doing an inward or outward motion. All it does is just help those screws when you're actually moving them, they're staying level to each other so there's not an actual deviation between them. So the one's not like way out, way up, one's way one's tight. not way tight. So now that we understand those motions, what we want to do is center it up over one knob and we want to get that bubble level in the center of that circle. So you're going to have to move it and see what it does and make your adjustments the other direction. Now I do make this look a little bit easy. I do have some practice with this. So it is going to get easier. You're going to understand how much of the motion is. So the more you go down into the deeper mobile levels, the less movement it's going to be. So the more of a level base that you start with, the less Easy movement is. you're going to be. Yep. All right, so once it's centered up. Once it's centered up, I'll hit the down arrow, and then I'll get to, to the next bubble level, which is a 1 to 100. So I'm just going down and down and being more precise. So now all I'm going to do is just basically level it out, moving it around. And obviously, there is a little bit of a lag on the face display. So just move it and see what it does, and then go ahead and make the adjustment afterwards. All right, so once that bubble level is centered up, I will press the down arrow one more time to go to the next screen. And if you go too many times, you'll end up going past this. So you can always hit the down arrow again just to go back to the ones you've already oh, done. Just cycle through it. Just okay. cycle back through. So 1 to 250, 1 to 100, and then 1 to 10. Dial in the 1 to 10. Dial in 1 to 10. And then this one's going to be your most finest to move. You're barely going to be doing any sort of movement. And then once it's centered up on the screen and it looks good to you, just do a final screw. Little final screw. There we go. All you have to do is hit the back and forth arrows, and that will exit the equipment out of that screen. And it will give you the 10 second counter so that you can go to the waiting for connection screen afterwards so that you can connect your actual data collector within field link to your robotic total station. You're off and running then. And you're, you're basically good to go. The only last step is. Just tighten up your strap now that your legs are actually set there so that they won't actually spread out on you. 
And that's it. So now your tripod is completely set up and you're ready to start laying out. So John, thanks for doing this. Yeah, no yeah. problem, Corey. You knew how to do a tripod, so I mean, you passed I would the hope test. So. <laughs> so, so I definitely need to phone a friend on this because no one would have ever believed that I am an expert in this topic. And so, of course, don't forget, smash that subscribe button so you're notified of the latest tips, tricks, and pointers that we post here at That's the Point. And thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. See you guys.